If you're into design, whether that's motion or graphic design, you probably know how to use gradients as it's a very simple tool that you can use. But in this video, I wanna talk about several advanced ways on how we can use gradients to create incredibly artistic work. So for this project, we're obviously gonna create some really cool gradient backgrounds, but we're also gonna take a look at how to create gradient textured shapes to add even more detail to your projects and giving you more options for your future motion graphic work. All right, remember you can download the project files if you wish to use this as a template, break it down, or just follow along. The very first thing we're gonna create is this beautiful twirl gradient background. It's very easy to create and fun to do. So we'll come here to layer new solid, I'll call it gradient, click OK. And then we'll go to effect, generate, and we'll grab the four color gradients. So what I suggest is picking two colors. So in my case, I'm gonna do like a magenta uh, and a very dark blue. So I'll come here as my first color and I'll set this to my very nice dark blue. It's like my second color, set that to dark blue as well. And then select my other colors and set that to a nice, you know, magenta-ish type color. And then with the effects selected, I can move these anchor points and kind of just variate the gradient just by a little bit. Uh, and this will give it, I don't know, you just have a little bit more control over it. So already with our basic graphics in here, the gradient does add some value to our work, but we need to turn this into a nice twirl gradient. So to do this, we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer. We'll make sure the adjustment layer is right above our gradient. Then we'll go to effect, distort, and we'll grab turbulent displace. We'll set the displacement to a vertical displacement. Set the amount to 300 and the size to 150. And then we'll go to complexity and we'll set this to maybe nine. And it's gonna tear up our image a little bit. So what we'll do is go to effect, stylize. We'll grab motion tile. We'll bring the motion tile effect above the turbulent displace. And we'll set the output width and height to 300, both. And then make sure you check on mirror edges. And that will fix the tearing up of your gradient. And already that's making a massive difference. You can stop right here if you like this. But we wanna add a little bit of animation to this. So we'll come here to effect, distort, and we'll grab CC smear. We'll set the radius up to 1000. And that's gonna automatically make a massive difference in our gradient, but we'll come here, select the effect. You'll see some anchor points. There's one here in the center, which you can barely see. And then here's one at the top. All we're gonna do is make sure we're at the beginning of our timeline, add a keyframe for from and to. We'll move forward in time, maybe seven seconds or however long you want your animation to be. And we'll just go ahead and move these anchor points over just by a little bit. And this will distort and animate the gradient. Then what we'll do is we'll take our CC smear effect. We'll go to edit duplicate. So we'll have two of these in here. We'll click the stopwatches for from and to so we can start over with our keyframes. We'll move these over to the other side, for example, and we'll add a keyframe for both of them. Move back to seven seconds on your timeline and then just move these anchor points over to continue another unique animation. Okay, so then we'll go to effect distort and we'll grab twirl. And this is the last effect we're using. And by changing the angle, this is gonna give you a very unique look for your gradient. And this is gonna create a nice twirl sort of gradient look. The more you crease the twirl, the crazier your gradient is gonna look. So go ahead and experiment with that. But for me, I'm gonna keep this at say maybe negative 50 degrees or so. So now we have a nice twirl gradient set up. And later in the video, we'll talk about how to color correct it so you can have maximum control over the color palette of your scene. So at the moment, this technique by itself looks really nice if you're using it as a background. So the next topic I wanna to talk about in this video is how to create a gradient shape, which is gonna be awesome for adding extra detail to your compositions and just making them really unique. So let's create ourselves a new composition. We'll call it shape and click okay. And believe me when I tell you, you can create any shape that you want, but I'm just gonna grab the ellipse tool, uh, turn off the fill, click okay, go to stroke, set the solid color, click okay. And I'll use a stroke with about 200. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create this uh, stroke circle like this. And I'll just make sure that this is all centered up. So now that the shape is ready to go, we'll create a new adjustment layer and we'll go to effect blur and sharpen and we'll grab a radial blur. We'll set the blur amount to about 60, set the type to zoom. And then there's an anchor point here in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and move this anchor point up and this will shift the direction of the blur to be towards the bottom. Doesn't matter what direction you place it in. Uh, but then what I want to do is come here to the top, grab the rectangle tool and just kind of create this rectangle mask on top of our shape like so. Then I'm going to come here to the mask, set it to subtract, but it doesn't really matter. And then hit F on my keyboard for mask feather and just feather this out. So the top part of our shape will be very smooth while the bottom part is going to be blurred out, which is going to give it a very nice look uh, later in this video. Then let's come here to effect blur and sharpen and add a quick Gaussian blur. Let's smooth this out just a little bit more by setting this to maybe eight ish and then go to effect transition and grab venetian blinds let's set the transition completion to about 50 percent feel free to change the direction i'll set it to 90 degrees we'll set our feather to about five and then we'll alt click the stopwatch for width and we'll type in wiggle 
open parenthesis 0 0.5 comma 10, just like this. And now we've made a unique shape and that's totally fine. So let's come back here to our main composition, go to the project panel and bring in that composition we just created underneath everything. And now we have this unique shape in here, which is gonna add some more detail and value to our composition. Before we move further into the video, we have a sponsor, and that's us. If you use After Effects or Premiere Pro, then be sure to check out our Motion Duck extension, which has over 20,000 editable templates for your projects. For example, you can browse, import, and edit templates all from the Motion Duck extension. So you'll be able to save hours of time on every project while producing high quality work. You can also download our free 100 template pack with the links in the description below. And if you purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our channel, so thank you very much. Okay, so now that we have our shape in here, let's go ahead and give it a gradient. So we'll go ahead and create another composition, and this will be another way to create a unique gradient that you can use for your future videos as well. So I'm gonna grab the pen tool here at the top, make sure fill is set on, and we'll set this to like a nice light blue color. We'll turn off stroke if that's set to on. And we'll draw a custom shape like this. It doesn't have to be anything special. It could look just like a two-year-old did it. And then we'll click off of it. We'll go ahead and create another custom shape here around the outer edge of this. Click off of it. We'll change the color to be something else. So maybe I'll go to like a light sort of yellow here. Click OK. Put it underneath the previous shape layer. And I actually moved it in a little bit and changed it to orange. And then I'll go ahead and create another one, another outer layer. Go ahead and close it up. Set it underneath. Change the color. And we'll continue this process until we fill up our entire composition and you can do anything random. You don't have to be creating the same shapes that I am at all. I'm just going ahead and mixing this up by a little bit. And maybe here in the corner, I'll just create another unique shape, you know, like that. And I'll set the color to maybe like a very dark gray. Click OK. I'll go ahead and close this up with one more unique color. And I'll set this maybe to like a very nice dark orange. So just go crazy with it. Be creative. This is another way to create gradients in a very unique way. Then when I'm happy with this, what I'll do is I'll create myself an adjustment layer. And then we'll go to effect, blur and sharpen, and we'll grab a Gaussian blur. You're going to have to set this up to like maybe 700 to 800 on the blurriness. And you'll get a unique gradient like this. Then I want to come here to effect noise and grain, add a quick noise HSL and set the lightness to 10%, change it from uniform to maybe grain, uh, and then go to effect color correction curves. And I'll come here and pull down the RGB band to make this a little bit darker to create a little bit more contrast like this. All right, so then we'll go back to our main composition, bring in that custom gradient that we just created, and then toggle switch to the modes until you see the track mat. And for your custom gradient we just created, go ahead and set that to your shape. And now we have this custom gradient on our shape. And that by itself looks really nice, but we want to animate this a little bit further. So we'll come here to layer, new, null object. Parent the shape and the gradient to that null object. And we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation. I'll click it and maybe type in time, asterisk 20. And this will continually to rotate that shape like so. And then coupled with your background that we've created, you know, it's going to come together, but we'll go ahead and play with some color effects to really dial this in together to create one ultimate composition. All right, so now we need to mess around with color correction to dial in the look that we want. There's a lot of cool techniques we'll go through here. So let's go ahead and go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll go to effect, color correction, we'll add curves. And one thing that I see right here is that this is a very low contrast scene. So I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe create an S curve here by pulling down the RGB curve uh, to make this darker. And I'll come here to the top, add a point and just Pull this up and this will be like a nice way to add increased contrast you see everything's a little bit darker it's coming together then let's go ahead and create one more adjustment layer let's go to effect uh channel and we'll grab shift channels and this is a way to dial in a very unique look uh just kind of randomly just mess around the settings so for example i can come here to the green channel and i can change it to a different channel so that'll give it a unique look but maybe if i come here set the blue you know you're gonna get this unique look and you can just go ahead and mess around with the channels here. You can even turn them off and you're just going to get different looks without really putting in any effort. But I'm going to keep it at red, blue, blue to give it this look that I'm uh, working with here. And one thing I noticed uh, looking at this is that the blacks are not fully crushed. So what we can do is grab that final point on that curves effect and just bring it in. And this will crush the blacks and will create even a deeper contrast. Another thing I suggest that you do is go to effect noise and grain, add some noise and set it to about 22 ish percent. Uncheck use color noise. Now, one thing you can do is download a project file. I'm going to give away a few of these grunges in our background pro pack for free. So you can just, you know, for example, I can just apply this to my composition, set the blend mode to maybe soft lights. 
and this will be a unique way to texture your work. And then, you know, another thing I can do is come here to my gradient layer at the bottom, hit T on my keyboard for opacity and lower down the opacity by a little bit. That will help separate the shape from the background. So by following the techniques in this video, you can put together really cool, unique compositions by following these few gradient tips. Remember, you can join our Discord server, the link in the description below. You can also share your work on Instagram, tag us at Sunduck Films. We love seeing your work and always be creating.